Astronomy to GCSE, Topic 4.2, Galaxies. So 1. Hubble's Tuning Fork. There are many types of galaxies, and Hubble created a diagram called Hubble's Tuning Fork in order to classify these galaxies. To start with, let's have a look at the four types of galaxy. The first is elliptical. An elliptical galaxy has an oval shape, like this galaxy pictured here. Next we have a spiral galaxy. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. A barred spiral galaxy is like a spiral galaxy except there is a straight central bar before the spiral arms. Irregular galaxies are irregular as they have no distinct shape, so they are not elliptical, spiral or even barred spiral. So Hubble created a diagram to show all of these different types of galaxies, apart from the irregulars as they're just irregular. This diagram is called Hubble's Tuning Fork. It's called a tuning fork because it looks a bit like one. That's simple. So the elliptical galaxies that are most circular are called E0. The next most circular are E1, then E2, all the way to E7, where the elliptical galaxies are quite oval. Next, where the tuning fork splits, you get S0. This is called a lenticular galaxy, and it's in between a, an elliptical galaxy and a spiral galaxy. On top of the tuning fork, we get spiral galaxies. These range from SA, the tightest spirals, then to SB, and then finally SC, the loosest spirals. On the bottom of the tuning fork, we have the barred spirals, ranging from SBA, the tightest, then to SBB, and all the way to SBC, the loosest. So when you draw Hubble's tuning fork diagram, it needs to look like this as a minimum, and possibly include all the intervals. I couldn't really hear, as the page is a bit short. So which type of galaxy is the Milky Way? It's a SB, so it's a spiral and here on the tuning fork diagram. Two. Let's get some classification practice. If you want to get some online practice, then go to this link where the Galaxy Zoo give you a crash course in galaxy classification. Have a look especially at how tightly do the spiral arms appear, as this will be useful for your exam. 3. Galaxies that emit other types of light. Some galaxies emit large quantities of the electromagnetic spectrum that are not visible light, like X-rays or radio waves, etc. These electromagnetic rays are usually in addition to visible light. Some of these galaxies are called Active Galactic Nuclei, or AGN for short. As the name suggests, these galaxies have nuclei that are active. If you imagine the nucleus of a galaxy, you have a supermassive black hole. I'll represent the black hole by outlining its event horizon, which is the point which cannot be crossed. It is no, it's the point of no return even for light. This next disk, which is called the accretion disk, is a very thin spinning disk of matter that is about to fall onto the black hole. There is a huge amount of friction in the disk as the matter circles the black hole. This friction causes the matter to get extremely hot and the disk can emit vast amounts of radiation like radio waves and x-rays. There are three main types of active galaxies. Seyfert galaxies, which are spiral galaxies with bright nuclei. Quasars, which is sought for quasi-stellar radio source. They look like stars from the visible light, but when viewed in other wavelengths they emit vast quantities of light, including radio waves. Quasars are some of the oldest objects in the universe. Blazars also can look quite like stars, but lie closer to us than quasars do. Blazars emit most, if not all, of the electromagnetic spectrum, and they vary in magnitude, just as a variable star does. To image and understand active galactic nuclei, astronomers use many regions of the electromagnetic spectrum, as AGNs emit vast quantities of many wavelengths of light. 4. The Local Group The nearest galaxies to us are called our local group. The local group all appear blue-shifted as they are moving towards us. 
If you have not come across Blue and Redshift, then this is covered in 4.3. The local group is comprised of over 50 galaxies, although most of them are dwarf galaxies. The local group is about 10 million light years across. So do we know some of the galaxies in the local group? The easiest would have to be the Milky Way, our own galaxy. The next most famous would be the Andromeda Galaxy, which is M31. It's part of the Messier catalogue. The Andromeda is the largest galaxy in our local group. We now have the two Magellanic Clouds. The first is the Large Magellanic Cloud. This is an irregular dwarf galaxy which actually orbits the Milky Way. The Large Magellanic Cloud is actually the fourth largest galaxy in the local group. The second Magellanic Cloud is the Small Magellanic Cloud, again an irregular dwarf galaxy that also orbits the Milky Way. The final galaxy we need to know about in the local group is the Triangulum Galaxy, which is the third largest galaxy in the local group. 5. The Distribution of Galaxies Galaxies are not distributed evenly, so not like this. They clump together in groups, a bit like our local group. So, we go from an individual galaxy to a group of galaxies, like our local group. These contain over 50 galaxies, like our local group. You then get to clusters. These contain much more galaxies than a group. Our nearest cluster is the Virgo cluster. This contains 1300 galaxies and possibly up to 2000. So there are a huge collection of galaxies. Superclusters are collections of groups and clusters. Our local group and the Virgo cluster are part of a supercluster called the Virgo supercluster. The Virgo supercluster contains at least 100 galaxy groups or clusters, so it's huge. For GCSE astronomy, you have to understand that galaxies are grouped in larger clusters and superclusters. That is the end of Astronomy to GCSE 4.2 Galaxies. Thank you very much for listening. See you next time.